All right, podcasters, you are in for a real treat here. A lady who is kicking butt and taking names out there who has an amazing podcast. If you've not checked it out, the Heal Endometriosis Naturally. And she's, she's cranking out some episodes, doing an amazing stuff, got a big passion for what she does. And so we're honored to have Wendy Laidlaw join us here on International Podcast Day. So what is going on, Wendy? How's the weather where you're at? Well, you can tell by my lovely many layers that it's classic Scottish weather. We didn't have a summer. We don't have such a thing. So it's it's usual cold, damp, drab and reek. But it's a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. So don't let the weather put you off visiting. Yeah, you know what? We're looking forward, actually, to once it does clear up where we can travel a bit more, getting over into your beautiful part of the world mm-hmm. and, and spend some time up that neck of the woods. But you, let's let's take a second. Why don't you st- share with our listeners and those that are watching this a little bit about your kind of your podcast journey to where you're at today and how you kind of got started? Sure. Yeah, I, I think um, anyone who's thinking about starting a podcast, it feels quite terrifying putting yourself out there in that capacity to the to like what feels like the whole wide world. But realistically, I think when we start, we're just like speaking to ourselves. We we, we don't have an audience, so. Um, I think um, having been part of Russell Brunson's 2CCX for a number of years now, you know, I, I published my book and that was terrifying enough as it was. And then I felt, you know, that actually people were were wanting more. So it was how could I give more value, more content for free and and also track the journey of, of the women that were coming through my programs and having tremendous success. So that's where the podcast journey began. And as I say, it initially, it, that first pressing that publish button, it, it felt, oh my Lord. But realistically, there was nobody there listening to start with. And I think as Russell Brunson says, you just start documenting your journey and you start like uh, producing podcasts. And you not only do you find your voice, but you really find what resonates with your audience as well. So that's been fantastic. Um, I think if we do my podcast now, I don't know how many years, but you know, I, I, I like to kind of, I'm at the point with my podcasts where they tend to be quite lengthy. I, I'm, you know, there's something I'm passionate about or there's something that things have happened and, and I feel would really benefit my women from hearing and the feedback is good, you know? So yeah, so far so good. I'm, I think they say it's the hundred mark that when you really start to find your voice, I've maybe got about 30 or to go, but, um, but no, it's, it's fantastic. I think podcasting really suits the pace of that everybody goes at now people can listen on the go and, and and you know people like you and they relate to you then they can get more of you in that way i love what you've got behind you because uh, the testimonials uh, up on the wall there that can really kind of help to realize that hey there is a, a listener base out there for you i mean it's a beautiful thing you were published before the podcast as you mentioned and, and some other things yeah. but a lot of people that hey this is brand new you know like we talked yeah. about you and i are both part of the 2cc club and Ben, our previous speaker, was also part of that. Starting a new podcast or launching when you don't ha- don't know if anybody is ever going to listen besides your mom yeah. or your dad. You know what I mean? <laughs> that doesn't count as downloads when they listen. No, exactly. Exactly. I know. I mean, it's super exciting. I mean, I've had women email me and I've got like a big pile of testimonials next to me here on the floor. And, you know, the email me say, oh, I listen to, you know, as I go to bed at night and, and you know, I listen to on the go and, and you know, thank you. And so all you need is like one or two people giving you that podcast feedback to kind of go, Oh wow. So people are listening. And I think it takes a while to find your voice and it's a good way to, it's almost a form of self therapy in a certain yeah. degree, isn't it? Podcasting is like you, you have these inklings, you have these ideas and these passions, these things that are driving you and you hope that your audience, you know, that you attract, you know, feel the same way. And when you get that feedback, it's, it's, uh, it's really inspiring to um to, to keep producing in fact i've got i've been a wee bit delayed this month but um i've got like two podcasts just waiting to go up and and then it's just so nice to see these numbers go up and up and up and the downloads go up and up and up and and um, and, and people getting the value that's what it's all about mm-hmm. you know yeah that's the truth what's been the biggest surprise besides feedback and testimonials from people and, and hearing stuff what has been the biggest surprise or the thing that's popped up or happened to you because you, you've been podcasting I think it's just finding what I really think and feel. And and I, I did it because I felt, um, you know, my woman would, would appreciate the extra value. It was an extra free right. thing that I could give them over above my book and my, my, my website and, and downloads and all that kind of stuff. 
And then, so I was doing it for them, but I think you probably realize this yourself, Scott, when you start podcasting, you start to learn so much more about yourself. Yeah. You start off with, with this intention and good intention, but then you learn so much more about yourself on the journey, which, which is surprising. And, and then you feel yourself getting more confident. You feel yourself like having more of an opinion, which perhaps you might not have had before, <laughs> you know, so, so the chicken feathers slowly disappear from your trouser legs, you know, as, as you're feeling more and more braver to kind of have an opinion, uh, which I think I, I'm talking for them. A lot of people here, I'm sure start off with kind of like, you know, is anything I've got to see worthy or, you know, will I, will I have rocks thrown at me? Will, will people, will the trolls out there destroy me? Um, so I think that's the most surprising thing is finding your own voice, finding out what, what you're really passionate about. And then the bonus is if people really relate to that as well, you know, they're, they're really coming along with you on the journey. Yeah. You know, you mentioned something that I, I bring up a little bit, the trolls out there. I think we all end up having that person that jumps on gives the one star review or doesn't like us no matter what we have going on. No. Because, and I've always found that the trolls have something worse going on in their lives and you pray for them. You know? Well, I, exactly. I think they say hurt people, hurt people. And I think it's an explanation. It's not a justification. And I think, you know, again, on, I'm sure you're the same on your journey is I've used that as fuel to go like stuff you, you know, A, you're probably an idiot and you don't know what you're talking about. Um, you know, and if, cause if you did, you wouldn't be putting this line of argument. And, and I think it was, um, there's a British comedian here called Ricky Gervais. And um, he talks about on Twitter occasionally, he says, I probably should have left it, which, you know, he then engages in this kind of back and forth. And a couple of times I've done it because it's really shown up. Like they don't know what they're talking about. They're just full of hate. They're just full of yeah. anger. And like you say, you know, it's annoying sometimes, but um, it really helps hone in and, and get, get clear yourself on what, um, what you're passionate about and your line of argument and your knowledge. And, and invariably it makes them, it puts the light on how they're not really that sharp, you know, mm -hmm. not the sharpest knife in the block as they say here. Yeah. And, and um, but yeah, so I think it's hard when you first start out because you take these things so personally. Um, yeah, that's and, true. You know, well, when I first started out, my, my published my book, I mean, I go and cry for days if somebody had left a, a bad review, you know, and then now I'm like, okay, rocket fuel. Let's just use this to keep propelling me forward because there are people out there that are, that are liking it. And, you know, as long as I feel my intentions are honorable in the right way, that's all that matters. That makes a lot of sense. Now, we're talking about a little social media stuff like that. What do you find as being the best platform that you see? Have, a, either helped you promote the most or B, maybe get the most amount of social engagement back and forth with your audience or your listeners. What, what's, what are the things that you love doing to promote your show? Um, I mean, from a platform perspective, I use Libsyn because I think it goes out now to 27 different platforms when I mm -hmm. publish, which is just amazing. So if anyone is thinking of starting, I mean, it's, it's not the nicest looking like platform and dashboard. It looks a bit antiquated, but if you can get over that, and I'm quite a visual person, so it took me a wee while to get over that. But if you can, if you can kind of get over that, it's the best one, and it gives you that that widest exposure. Um, I mean, my email list obviously tends to be the, the most engaged, and my website and things as well. Um, I see you're you're on YouTube and stuff. I'm not quite quite there yet, but but the audio does go into my YouTube channels and things as well. But I think Libsyn is the best platform to give you the widest reach on Facebook and. Uh, uh, LinkedIn and all the other heart heart radio and and uh, radio public all these other uh, stations so it's it's kind of been blasted out everywhere which can feel a bit intimidating to start with but it, you've just kind of got to go for it mm -hmm. now I love what you said about how you're using your email list stuff like that we know a lot of podcasts you start off like oh I don't want to don't want to overwhelm my audience, right? You know I want to do the least minimum to try to have the most amount of success and I think it's the opposite you've got to do more to get more, right? Yeah, well, I think Russell had said, if you're not podcasting regularly and emailing to your list, especially people that have bought into your programs, then, you know, they're, they're kind of wondering, you like, is, is she still, you know, um, is she still around? Is she still present? Is she, is she still a kind of viable option? So I think by emailing your list, you're giving them value. If they don't like it, they can unsubscribe. That's, that's their choice and that's their option. But I think especially people that buy into your program, it keeps you current, it keeps you fresh, it keeps them you know, knowing that you're, you're still moving forward, you're in the know. So why wouldn't you uh, offer that value to your list and the people that are currently going through your programs because you're still giving value. 
Mm. Yeah, that's the, liver, as Russell says, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's the thing. If people unsubscribe, they're actually doing you a favor, I think, for the most part. Yeah. And those that want to, to, to join in, sharing with it. How often are you emailing out to your email list? Daily, weekly, monthly, every two weeks? What's the kind of the, the schedule for you? I mean, at least once a week, ideally. I mean, again, I don't just email for, for the heck of it. I like to obviously give value or, again, if I'm sort of running you know, promotions to, to my next programs, my 21 day challenge or my, my, my course or whatever. But again, my, my podcast is a natural email out to people because if they're on my email list, they're going to want to hear it. You know, they're going to want to want to know that, you know, you know, what's going on and how can they get benefit from that? Mm -hmm. Now, when you added the podcast, um, are you doing all the editing production yourself? Or are you outsourcing that? Great question. Obviously, as a classic entrepreneur, I tried to do everything myself at the beginning because <laughs> I thought, oh, it's just easier me doing it myself. It's not. This is something that, you know, I've had to learn. Um, I'm, I'm kind of fast tracking now because I'm learning like it's much easier to outsource quicker and cheaper, especially if you give yourself an hour, hourly rate. If you can figure out what your hourly rate is yeah. and then kind of go actually if that took, for example, I had to send some parcels recently and because of the COVID thing, a very long, boring story short, it took me days to get these parcels wrapped and out for, for clients and things. And I'm like, outsource, you know? So I've already been outsourcing loads. I've got a great team of people behind me now and um, great people on Fiverr and Upwork, freelancer, as well as my own team. So I recognize the value of getting some great people that you can say, hey, here's the audio, here's the intro, outro. Uh, can you just clean up any ums and ahs and just check the volume? And then they just send it back. And um, I'm still a bit of a control freak. I like to have a final look before, before it goes on. But yeah, it's, it's, it's getting into that mindset of it's better for, for you to, to free up your time, to, to give it to, to an expert and what they do, and then they, they bring it back to you. And then you're free to keep moving forward and thinking about what your next podcast is going to be. Yeah, I agree with you there. You got to learn to outsource. You said something that I think is important. I want to come back to it in a second there. You said figure out your hourly. Yes. Can you explain a little bit more about that for those that are listening that may have never heard that before that are spending five hours on a 10 minute podcast episode? You know? <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. I think um, uh, Alex Sharfin does, does a great uh, time checker for, for, I think it's about a week. And, and you, you can make up one yourself. I mean, basically it's a sheet where you, for every 15 minutes, you do this exercise, you actually just keep a record, just, just for an exercise for a week of what you're doing within that time. And what's fantastic about that exercise is that it increases your awareness as to where you're spending your time. I'm sure we've all been there and we go, where's the day gone? What have I done? I feel like I've done nothing all day, but yet you've not stopped. So that exercise increased the awareness of, what was taking my time, where my time was spent, and whether or not I was actually productive for my clients or per productive for me as my business or whatever. And then from there, you then go, okay, so then you kind of like, well, what is my hourly rate? You know, somebody was just to, to, to engage with me on a one-to-one, -one, what is my hourly rate? Um, so I worked out my hourly rate about 900 pounds an hour. So I'm like, okay, so if that has taken you an hour and you can outsource that, so that's you losing 900 pounds, but you could outsource it for a fiver. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that actually it's a little bit more cost effective for you to outsource mm -hmm. that than trying to do it yourself. Cause you're actually losing money by doing it yourself. So as I say, I've had to do a, a lot of disciplining, a lot of shifting of my mindset to, to really understand that concept. And it also means you, you're building momentum a lot faster. You move a lot faster because you've got all these other brilliant people. I mean, it takes a while to find the right people, you know, that work for you and people that are good. And if you find out a good person, don't let them go. Um, then you've got these great people and then you really start to build momentum. So uh, establishing your hourly rate is important and it could be 50 pounds an hour. It could be 5,000 pounds an hour. I don't know what it is for everybody, but even if you're starting out minimum, you'd be looking at 50 or 60 pounds an hour minimum. You know, if you think of a tradesman who comes to your home. So again, you can still go onto Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer and find someone. And it may, you may come across some people that are annoying and don't quite deliver to start with, but don't be discouraged. Just keep trying. There's some brilliant people out there. So if they can do it for a Fiverr or 15 pounds and you're starting out and you're, and, and of course there will be this mentality of, oh, I can't afford to outsource. Well, you can't afford not to outsource yeah. if you're serious about progressing forward. And I, and it's a mindset thing and it's, 
And I know it sounds annoying to say it's a mindset thing because everybody's like, oh, stop talking about mindset. <laughs> but you know, if you can understand that you're worth that amount, so therefore you're worth outsourcing, it frees you up to do what you're good at doing, which is like uh, on the business rather than in the business. Mm -hmm. That's the, one of the biggest things I learned early on is I'm pretty, you gotta figure out what your hourly is. Yeah. Outsource everything below that hourly rate, yeah. whatever it might be, and then anything that above our hourly rate, if you can do it great, then you are saving money, but then anything below, you, it's the, the, the quickest way to clone yourself, you know, to get a lot Absolutely. more done, right? Absolutely. And, I, and I'm from Scotland. Like we, we make money stretch as thin as it possibly can. I mean, it's like, so that you're spending any money was always kind of an anxiety thing. But actually, if I'm serious about reaching the people that need my help, people that I want to impact in the fastest possible way and deliver the most value, I physically can't do it all myself. You know, mm -hmm. I have to replicate myself, as you say, to, to reach more people. Now with your podcast, when, when you started off, was there somebody who was a mentor for you or somebody you modeled your podcast a little bit that if you listened to it or somebody that was a coach or mentor to you to really help you get through some of the, uh, uh, the ups and downs of launching a podcast or being consistent. I mean, I'm going to mention his name again, but it was Russell Brunson because yeah. I was, I think we went to Phoenix um, when he, when he was, he did the three day event there and he was talking about traffic secrets and, and he was, you know, very much reiterating how uh, our email address and, and our, our email list rather, we own that traffic. We don't own any traffic on Facebook or Instagram or, or YouTube or LinkedIn because they could shut you down tomorrow and you've lost yep. that. So I, I recognized that I needed to, to, you know, to, to build this podcast so I could build my list so I could add extra value. And, um, and I guess it was just kind of, you know, as I say, Libsyn was, was fantastic. I think it was recommending quite early on to go with Libsyn, even though there was all these nice shiny new dashboards, but they only went to kind of one or two different places. So um, I didn't have anyone specifically hold my hand. I remember when I had to set Libsyn up and I was almost weeping because it just felt so laborious. Um, um, but yeah, so, so no, I didn't have anyone in particular. I just kind of, I mean, to be honest, it's not that hard to set right. up. Um, and, I, and I want almost to demystify it. It's not that hard to do. I think we as humans like to overcomplicate things. I think if you can just record, um, I mean, I've just got a simple, your microphone. You, I mean, there's all this Gucci kit out there, which I could get excited about, but I've decided not until I'm at a certain number, you know, so just get the, you know, you can just record even off your computer or your laptop, even on your phone. And again, I went to Fiverr, um, who did my intro and outro for me. And I just, you know, I got them to sort of patch it all together. And then, and then I just uploaded it onto Libsyn, I wrote a little description and, and Bob's your uncle, as they say there. there. So, Again, it, it's a simple thing to do. Uh, it feels like anything the first time. It feels very daunting and overwhelming. But um, but yeah, I was just motivated by the fact I needed to build my list. I need to build a quality list. And I think people who listen to podcasts tend to be an, an intellectual, intelligent type of person. They're wanting to better themselves, educate themselves. And those were the type of people that I wanted on my list. Now, what are some of the things that you're doing to get people to opt in, that call the actions or those opt-ins what's what's worked out really well for you i'm sure you've probably done a variety of different things to get people into your email list because i agree with you that's all that we own you yes. know for the most part and what what's what's been your most effective getting people to opt into your list well i think they talk about micro commitments don't they um and and so i'm i'm always i'm always giving a call to action you know i understood that concept quite early on there's no point in just being generic you're kind of wanting to encourage people to take action because that's where they're going to get results. Most people tend to sit on the fence or are scared or frightened. So trying to connect with them emotionally, trying to relate to them where they are in their journey and then say, you know, to get their free top five quick start tips. That's, that's my, always my go-to. Um, and they can download that on my, on my, my website. And again, if I'm doing a 21 day challenge or doing my courses, but I always, 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 always have a call to action, um, which is encouraging them to take the next step. I love it because that's what a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just going to throw it out there and let people listen to me and, and track that way. Hope they do stuff. Uh, and we all know you've got to be productive and, and that see, you know, call to actions or delivering content, a lot little micro commitments, your, your best list, your directory, whatever it might be. Yeah. Uh, that's what people are looking for. So anytime you can give that kind of stuff, it helps out tremendously. And they don't mind giving an email up to, to swap it out, right? No, no, exactly. Where do you see your podcast going in the next 12 months? Well, I, my, my podcast um, has changed. I think when I started out, 
I was a bit scared, so I hid behind uh, interviews. Um, I interviewed my success stories, and, and that was fine. And my, my podcast has kind of evolved as I've got more confident. And I think my success stories are really important. I also get former um, success students to come back a year later, two years later. So again, people can go and listen to all the stuff and hear their progress. Right. My podcast has evolved and then I, I speak more now about just me. It's just me on the podcast. And I've had guests on in the past before, but only if I felt that they really benefited my audience, you know, if right. they really had something to offer. Um, and obviously were, were aligned with my values and, and my, my things like that. So um, it's an interesting question. I don't, I, I mean, I think, I guess I'm finding my own voice. I have more of an opinion now. I'm more confident about what I believe in and I'm not so scared to, to share that. Um, I would like to have obviously other people interview other people who are the movers and shakers and, and really I'm going to say challenge them. Yeah, maybe challenge them actually. Maybe have them on my podcast and challenge them as to kind of their thoughts and feelings and beliefs as in people who are saying certain things but actually don't seem to have much substance. So perhaps just be more more engaging in that respect. It makes a lot of sense. Well, that's the thing is it is ever evolving, you know. Exactly. You know, exactly. you find what you what your listeners want and what you're comfortable doing and how much you prepare ahead of time. What would you say when you look at um, how much preparation do you put into before doing an episode? Great question. I do masses. I mean, I literally what I do is I have this 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 format where I I'll be inspired or or moved by something or impassioned by something, and I will write out. I'll write it out first, like my, my, what's in my head, I'll write, I'll type it all out. And then I sit with it and I come back to it. So, I mean, it's a, it's a good, it's sometimes be a good two weeks that I work on something and then, uh, and then I will record it, video and audio, but um, I try not to sound like I'm reading off the thing, but, uh, but sometimes there's, there's a lot, a lot of content that I'm wanting to, to share with people. So my preparation is, is quite extensive. I guess maybe as it evolve, I might not feel that I need to do that quite so much, but equally sometimes I can get impassioned by something and I think I want to make sure that the message is clear and the tone is right because the, the, the niche that I'm in is women's health and mm -hmm. women are invariably quite ill and, and very sensitive. So I have to also make sure that, you know, I'm you know, getting the measure right for them. So I put a lot of work into it. And then I also, what I do with that is I then upload that to Medium dot com as well so i not not every podcast but i use that i re repurpose that into my emails and also repurpose that onto medium where you can also put your uh, podcast link in as well nice cross promoting it with different aspects of that but doing research so you've got the gist of what you want to talk about what would you say your average episode length is for you wendy what's that sorry your, what's the average length of your episodes with us doing that much work is it an hour 30 minutes what are you kind of See, is your average episode length being for you? Oh, you mean as in what I record, you mean? Or, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Probably about anywhere between, oh, at least maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Um, as I say, maybe Russell's kind of encouraged me to maybe do shorter ones, I think, because he's talking about podcasting every day. But I kind of feel at the moment, and that might change, that I kind of, I think if you're offering something of value, then it tends to take a bit longer because you're trying to get into the, the meat and bones of it. Right. Uh, so at the well, moment, that's the thing I'd say. Russell, he speaks two times fast. So he can get it in. If he's just doing audio and he throws it to his whole team. But you're you're literally sharing what your thoughts and and the meat and bone, meat and potatoes kind of thing. Okay. It's yeah. you know, you want to you're teaching, you're educating. That's much longer than a seven or fifteen minute episode. I've never prescribed that shorter episodes are better. It all depends on what your message and what I your think, audience is. I think it does depend. I mean, again, I'm I'm not you know, I don't have an aversion to, to experimenting, but I feel the, the, the niche that I'm in, they're wanting to, they're scared, they're frightened. You're wanting to build a relationship. You're wanting them to get to know, like, and trust you. So there's a lot of people jumping into this space now, and there's a lot of predators and a lot of, you know, people with the wrong intentions, shall we mm -hmm. say. And they're, they're doing the two minute and the five minute and the seven minute, which is fine if that's for them. But my heart and soul tells me that, you know, women are wanting a little bit more depth compassion and and uh and integrity into to what's been talked about so um so yeah so what we'll see i i think i've learned on this journey that we just you just got to go you know you've got to move with with the river that you're on and and uh and 
just see where, where it takes you. But I know at my heart, I like to feel I'm delivering something with value and with content and they need to get to know to like me before they can take, have the courage to move on to the, the next stage. Yeah, that's a, that's a big thing is if you've got somebody who's listened to your hour long podcast, they're a lot more committed than if they're just taking in five or 15 minute episodes and, and, and the numbers are skewed. I always say when somebody throws out huge numbers, like, okay, how long is your average episode? Yeah. And let's figure that all out. Oh, okay. Technically, we've got the same amount of listeners. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I think that, that's it. I mean, our, our, the social media, our culture, everything's better, faster, more now. And, and, I, and I really subscribe to the kind of, I want to give value. So the value isn't just a wee sound bite, you know, uh, not for me where I'm at at this particular point in my journey. I really want them to get to know who I am so that they can maybe feel confident enough to, to download the top tips, join the 21 day challenge, come into the programs and really start to, to move forward in their own journey so that I can help them get to their destination. How has uh, your podcast helped you with everything being so crazy and chaotic with uh, COVID and Corona and everything? I think it's been great. I've, I've addressed these things, you know, I've tried to reassure people. I think there's so much scaremongering and so much, you know, uh, anxiety and fear and worries. So uh, kind of, I think my, my first podcast after the whole thing was, you know, it's all going to be okay. You know, our, our great, great ancestors have been through the Black Plague. They've been through the Spanish flu. We've, you know, we, we're, we're the strongest that we've, we've all, our, our ancestors, they, they survived all that. We'll get through this. And, and equally, it's okay to have the feelings that you have. And so it was, it was a good medium to sort of at least provide some reassurance, you know, for people that, um, you know, try and just come back to their own instincts, be careful what, what, where they're getting your news and careful that what's happening. So I felt the podcast was an opportunity then to reassure my audience. Yeah, there's a lot of fake news and a lot oh of false goodness. out there. <laughs> I, love I don't know if you've seen The Social Dilemma, which is a new documentary on Netflix, but fantastic. And, and we need more of things like that just to, because there's so many frightened people, they get frozen in fear. They don't then take any action. And then it causes great distress. You know. it, yeah, the su most surprising thing from that was at the end where all those heads and ex-heads and CEOs were like, yeah, we don't let our kids get on any social. I know. I know. <laughs> like, that, that tells you what you should be or should not be doing, right? Exactly. exactly. And I think even more reason to have a podcast yeah. because people are engaging the, the emotional parts of, of their, their body and their brain, you know, and they're listening. And, and we then, with our podcast, allow them to think. We need people to think, not just to be robots and kind of be, yeah, and not think. We want people to think. We want there to be debate. We want there to be discussion. There's too much of a divide now and not a place for that. And, and I think podcasts are a great medium for people to come together and have discussions. Amen to that. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for coming on International Podcast Day. What is the best way for our audience and listeners, the people who are watching this now or the replays to connect with you and find out more what, what you're doing? Well, firstly, thank you for having me on. And, and if, if you know of anyone who suffers with pain every month, any woman who suffers that it, pain with a period is not normal. Um, and it may be that she has a condition called endometriosis. It may be early, early, early signs of that. So um, people can learn more about, they can get a, a free paperback copy of my book called Heal Endometriosis Naturally Without Painkillers, Drugs or Surgery. Um, it's on Amazon and all the other bookstores. You can pay full price or you can go to healendometriosisnaturallybook.com and, and or you can go to healendometriosisnaturally.com and download the top five tips. So um, that's where people can find out more. Awesome. Thank you so much. Look forward to connecting with you in person at some point. Maybe have the new... The next time we have a Funnel Hackers Live in person, eh? Absolutely, absolutely. And we just need to get rid of this pesky corona so we can start traveling again i've got itchy feet but thank it's you so much same here. i am missing the travel definitely well yeah, and great the connection. To connect any way we can right yeah exactly well thank you so much for having me on scott it's great to meet you thanks wendy you too we'll see you later take care bye